Hello and welcome to my kitchen. In this video, I'm going to show you how I make sourdough bread. I'm going to try and make the recipe as simple as possible and I'm going to show you this one trick that I haven't seen anywhere. I think nobody knows this trick or hasn't tried this trick, but it works really well and it will save you a lot of time if you want sourdough bread just like that. So let's get cooking. The first thing you're gonna do is feed your sourdough starter. I like to use these plastic cups because they come with a lid and they're nice and tall so I can see when the sourdough starter has doubled in size. So take 50 grams of your sourdough starter, mix in 50 grams of flour, and add 50 grams of water. Then stir it to mix it up completely and put it in a warm place overnight. For me, it's by my water heater. I like to use a plastic bowl like this with a lid because I find it much easier to manage the dough in here and while it's resting, I can cover it easily. You'll also need a weighing scale because you're gonna need to weigh all your ingredients. And a spatula, something like this works well so that you can scrape the sides of the bowl if any of the dough sticks in there. The flour that I'm going to use today is this strong white flour from Aldi. So I'm going to do a white sourdough loaf. So I've got my sourdough starter that we fed last night in this bottle. And I'm just going to pour that into this bowl. It's nice and bubbly. So you can see it's 150 grams because we used 50 grams of the starter, 50 grams of flour and 50 grams of water. So that's perfect. I'm going to reset this scale. So after resetting my scale, I'm going to add 375 grams of water to this. Then reset the scale and add 16 to 20 grams of salt to that. Then go ahead and mix it in thoroughly with a spatula so that the salt is evenly spread. Then reset the scale and add 500 grams of flour. Then using a spatula, go ahead and mix it in thoroughly so that there's no dry flour anyway. You definitely don't want lumps in here. Then we're gonna cover it and let the dough rest for about 30 minutes. All right, so my dough's been sitting here for 30 minutes and we're gonna get ready to stretch it now. The first thing I'm going to do is just make sure I get all the dough scraped off the sides and then I'm going to wet my hand, only one hand, and then I'm going to grab my dough and stretch it and fold, stretch and fold, stretch and fold. So once I've done that, I'm going to let it rest again for another 20 to 30 minutes. And we'll do this four or five times. And when I'm stretching and folding, what I'm thinking about is the air holes that I'm making. A lot of the videos, the YouTube videos you'll see out there will talk about stretching and pulling to strengthen the dough and strengthen the gluten. And those things are very, very true. But for me, mentally, what I'm thinking about is the air that's getting trapped in the dough. So I pull it and I stretch it over and I'm thinking I'm making an air hole there. And that helps me a lot. So we'll revisit this in about 30 minutes. I wanted to share some tips with you regarding my experiences in shaping the sourdough loaf. So this is the first container that I bought. I bought this from Amazon and I didn't realize how big it is and also how wide and shallow it is because every time I shape my dough in here, my loaves came out like just like this, wide and actually quite flat. So this kind of container I would not recommend. My brother bought me this uh, container and this is actually really good because it's a lot smaller and it's deeper. 
So my loaves came out nice and round when I use this and um, you have to make sure that you're, you've got enough dough to put in here. So if I was doing one loaf today, I would use this, but I'm gonna do two smaller loaves. And for that, I found these bowls. I found these at Wilco and they work amazing for me. I bought them because they're so small and also because they're quite deep. And I just line them with a tea towel or a piece of linen cloth and uh, put my dough in here to shape it and my loaves come out really nice. I also use loaf tins sometimes and this works really well too. I just again line it with a linen cloth and uh, I need to have plenty of dough in here. So I'm not gonna use this today but I'm gonna make two smaller round loaves. You'll notice that by the third time you fold your dough, it's gonna be much smoother and more elastic and easier to handle. One other tip is I like to leave some water at the bottom of my sink because I noticed every time I wash my hands there's little bits of dough that's sticking in the sink. So I just keep about an inch or two of water when I'm washing my hands for easy cleanup. Now this is the fifth and final stretch and fold that I'm gonna do. My dough feels really nice and elastic now. And as I'm folding, I'm thinking mentally that I'm gonna trap the air in here. Then once you've done the folds, just wet both hands because we're gonna flip over the dough ball. So just grab it and flip it over. And then you want to put your hands in the middle like this and lift it up so that both the sides hang off the end. And then we're gonna fold it over so that the ends touch. And then turn it 90 degrees and do the same thing again. And then just leave it like that and fold again after 20 to 30 minutes. So I'm gonna wet both hands and grab and then fold and then fold that in. And turn it 90 degrees and do it again. Put that bit down and put that bit down. Oh, feels so nice and soft and hmm. One more, and then we're gonna be ready to shape it. All right, so now I'm gonna get ready to shape it. So I'm gonna wet my hands and do one final fold. And my dough feels absolutely lovely. It's nice and soft, and it's just really nice and pliable too. I'm popping the air bubbles that are on the top because you don't want them there. Just giving it a couple more folds. There we go. Now I'm going to cut it in half. Now I do like to use these scrapers to cut and shape my dough because I do find them handy so this is definitely worth the purchase. I am going to wet it a little bit Wet my hands again too, make sure they're moist. And then I'm just gonna cut this loaf in half as best as I can. Okay, I'm gonna put one half to one side and then with the other half of the dough, I'm gonna flip it over. And then I'm gonna spread it out. Stretch it out a bit. And then I'm gonna fold this corner over and the other corner. And then I'm just gonna fold these in as well and put this over there. Just try and fold it as best as I can to make it round and tuck it in. You want the skin on the top to be really tight so it holds its shape. Oh, 
And I'm gonna let this sit on the side. All right, and then I'm just gonna get my other loaf and do the same thing. That looks good. So now both my dough balls are ready to put into the containers. Then I'm gonna line my bowls with some linen. You can use tea towels if you like. Just make sure you don't use fabric softener while you're washing these because you'll get the smell in the sourdough. And then I'm gonna sprinkle some rice flour. I find rice flour works the best. For some reason it just does not stick. So there's a tip there. Use rice flour instead of plain flour to dust your sourdough loaves. And I've just got a coffee cup here actually that I wasn't using, so you don't need any special equipment for that. I'm also going to sprinkle some rice flour on my dough. And then carefully put the dough balls into the containers. And I'll sprinkle some rice flour on top of the dough as well. And then the final thing is to fold the linen over the top carefully, not too tight. And I like to keep these plastic bags and just put the dough inside the fridge. So I'm going to keep these in the fridge for between one to four hours. And then we'll bake it. I like to use my cast iron pot or Dutch oven to bake my sourdough bread because it can get really hot and it retains the heat really well. So I'm going to preheat my oven to 230 degrees and let the casserole dish heat up really well for about 20 to 30 minutes before I put my sourdough bread in there. Now before I start baking, I like to have everything ready. So I've got my oven gloves ready. I've got a trivet ready to take out the hot casserole dish and put that onto there. I've got a blade ready to score the dough before I put it into the oven. I've got some rice flour because I'll probably need to sprinkle some on the dough before I put it into the Dutch oven. I've got a timer so I know how long to cook the bread. I've got a rack here so that I can take out the hot bread once it's baked and cool it. And I've got some spatula so I can scoop out the bread. So it's really handy to have everything ready before you start baking. And I took my bread out of the fridge. So this has been in the fridge for just about two hours. The casserole dish has been in the oven for about 30 minutes. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and sprinkle the loaf with some rice flour so it doesn't stick when I put it into my casserole dish. And then I'm going to get ready to put the loaf into this very hot casserole dish. You have to be very, very careful because it's really hot. So I'm carefully going to put my dough inside and score it. Now I like to score around a centimeter then cover it up and quickly get it back into your hot oven. And we're gonna let this bake for 20 minutes with the lid on and then 20 minutes with the lid off. Okay, my first 20 minute timer is done, so I'm just going to remove the lid, but I'm going to keep it in the oven so that it stays hot. And we're going to bake for another 20 minutes. All right, so my first loaf is baked. And... This is what it looks like. And now I'm getting ready to put my second loaf in. So again, 
I'm just gonna dust it with the rice flour and put it into my Dutch oven and score it and bake it for 20 minutes. Now with the second loaf, I'm gonna show you a trick that I'm sure you're gonna love because once I figured it out, I use it all the time. So guys, if you're enjoying my video, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and show me that you like the video by giving me a thumbs up. Now, if you see air bubbles in the skin of your dough ball before baking it, make sure you pop them because if you don't, you get little craters like this and I totally missed that, but I'm glad it's here so that I can show you what it looks like. So my second loaf has been baking for 20 minutes and I can't wait to share this one trick with you. So when you make sourdough bread, there's two stages. The first step is to bake the sourdough bread for 20 minutes with the lid on. Then you remove the lid and you bake it for another 20 minutes. What I've done is I've stopped it at the first process. So here I've got my loaf that's gone through the first step and here I'm gonna take it out onto a rack and I'm gonna let it cool to room temperature. Once it's cool to room temperature, I'm gonna put it into a plastic bag and put it in the fridge. And whenever I want hot sourdough bread, what I'm gonna do is take the loaf out of the fridge, spritz it with some water and stick it in a preheated oven to 220 or 230 degrees Celsius and bake it for 20 minutes. And trust me, the bread comes out like it's fresh bread. My kids love it. We have hot sourdough bread for breakfast. We have hot sourdough bread for lunch. This makes life so much easier and you can have sourdough bread hot from the oven whenever you want it. I've given half-baked sourdough loaves to family and friends with instructions on how to finish baking it and they just love having hot fresh sourdough straight from the oven so it's a wonderful gift idea too. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you again soon for some more cooking inspiration.